Hey everybody, welcome back to Stonks on Rails. In this episode, I'm going to be covering more on the Turbo and Stimulus JS front-end frameworks. Specifically, we're going to be walking through some more common problems in doing CRUD operations with the backend and cross-communicating between components on your web page to make your JavaScript a little bit more versatile. For those of you who are new here, Stock Notes is an application I'm making for my own personal journaling of individual stock charts. I've got a whole playlist dedicated to this, and in it, I'm showing you how to use many of the latest features in Ruby on Rails to build a dynamic JavaScript-enabled front-end to your application. One of the features I'm going to be adding in this episode is an edit button for the individual stock notes. So in a previous episode, I made the new note button which you could see here, it opens up a modal form that you could use to add a new stock note. There it goes right there. But sometimes I'll make an occasional typo and I wanna go ahead and edit this. So I have this edit button right here and when I click it, I want it to open up the form just like this and be able to make an edited version. So let me show you how I set up Turbo and Stimulus JS controllers to make this happen. So let me recap this by giving you a little bit of an overview of the page structure. So first in the home index route, we've got the main part of the page and it's split into two sections. We've got the left side, which is the stock notes journal. And we've got this right side, which is gonna have some filters, but I haven't built them out yet. And that's the filters partial. So let's scroll down to the stock notes section, which is here, as you can see, H1 stock notes journal. And in it, we've got the stock notes toggle form. And this toggle form is actually just this new note button right there. The toggle form, this is the HTML code for the new note button. And that toggle is the form to open and close. And then stock notes form container is the actual container for the form itself, but it's hidden because it's a Twitter bootstrap modal div. And that's why you only see it when, uh, when you click this and it runs the JavaScript to make it appear. And then here are the partial stock notes that does the um, actual stock notes themselves. And load more form is a section at the bottom of the page, which I covered in another episode that does an infinite scroll. So when you go down, it's constantly loading more every time you get close to that form on the bottom. So in order for me to explain how I got this edit button working, I'm gonna first focus on the new note button. Fucking A. Okay, so I had a little bit of a bug here with the new note button that I had to fix. So when you click new note, it should load the new stock note form. And if you click edit, it should be able to load the edit stock note form. But if you click out of this uh, and you wanna go back to new note again, there I got working, it should refresh with the new note page. And this was kind of broken and I'll show you what the changes were that I made. And by the way, I just want to give you a quick reminder that if you want to see the source code for this entire project and follow along with me, then you can join my Patreon page. And for the price of a cup of coffee a month, you could have access to this source code for this project. When you sign up, just give me your GitHub username and I'll add you to the private organization that I have exclusively for my Patreons. So I did a little bit of a rearranging of this page. So I uh, moved the, this whole new note section, I, I call it the form toggle, into form container. So here, form container, let me uh, show you, inspect here. So this is form container right there. Uh, you have the toggle part and then you have the modal part. And this modal part is hidden. So it, uh, it corresponds to the Twitter bootstrap modal. So here's the demo of it. You launch the demo and, and then it shows this thing. It's part of the Twitter bootstrap library. It, it darkens the back part of the page uh, and pops up the box. That's how I'm doing modals in this application. See, I'm doing the same thing with the new note. 
So uh, the form itself is in this parcel right here. I'm using the lazy load part of the turbo frame tag. So what's going to happen is this source parameter here, it's going to load the new stonk note path, which is the modal form uh, after this overall page loads. And then, so what we're going to be doing basically is everything in a turbo frame tag is changeable. It, it's changeable out. That, that's the part of the page that dynamically changes. So this form is going to dynamically change and reload. It's, it's kind of like an iframe, but it's being powered by turbo. Let's take a quick look at that. So here we've got the modal form, and then as you can see there, we've got the turbo frame ID, stock note form, and everything inside of this section of HTML, uh, which is hidden right now, well, actually, there you go, uh, that, it's this content right here. So see, modal dialog, um, and then everything inside of it right there. That gets changed out by going to the uh, to the paths. In fact, we could navigate to this new stock note form without the frame. So if we go to the stock notes new path, there you go. You see the form itself, and it's not inside of a frame here. We're looking at like the whole page. It's in a frame, but this is all that's on that page. So what happens is, whenever we call that path on the main page and it has this turbo frame ID stock note form, it takes the contents of this and inserts it into that spot. Okay, so how am I setting this up to toggle it? So we have the form toggle, and it's basically this button here, a new note. And if you notice, this is a link to. So when you click this, you're, it's actually a hyperlink that's set up to look like a button. It's not really a button. And it navigates to the new stock note path, which is that URL that I just showed you, which has the form. Yeah, right here. So, so you're clicking a link to that. It's going to pull down the turbo frame and insert the frame within this page, within the HTML on this page. But that navigation to the link will replace the HTML, but it won't pop up the form to display it. We have to trigger the modal to actually show up. So how do I do that? Well, I'm using stimulus. And as you can see here, I have data action. And it goes to the stimulus controller, modal form toggle, open form. So let's go to the modal form toggle controller. And it receives that call from the page and it fires an event on the window. Dispatching events is how you communicate between stimulus controllers. So it's going to fire the event stock notes open stock note form and that event is going to be received by the controller on that form. So let's look at the actual form itself right here. The mobile dialog and here I have data action, and here are the events that it is set up to receive. As you can see here, it's looking on the window for these events. And here's a stonk notes open stonk note form. And when it receives this event on the page, it goes to the modal controller open form. Here's a modal controller. And then it actually performs a click on open button target dot click. Open button target is actually a hidden button on this form. So we have here D none on this button that I have. And this gets clicked behind the scenes through JavaScript code. And as you can see here, I have the data BS toggle, data BS target. These uh, data BS are for Twitter bootstrap. That's just basically how you set this up here uh, using the instructions on the modal component. So it's basically doing whatever this is. So if you look here in their demo example, see data BS target, uh, and it's connected up to this button, just like I have here, only that this button is hidden and we're programmatically clicking it through our stimulus controller. One of the things that I've done 
also on this is I've tried to make modal controller very generic. So I could have other modal forms here. I don't have to have just the stonk note form. I could recycle this entire modal controller, put it on another block of HTML, and kind of just change the events that's looking for, change the targets, because these targets are all actually very generic names. Open button. Well, open button could correspond. I mean, I could make another form that looks just like this and have it looking for a different event. You know, instead of open stock note form, it could be like open uh, open stock trade form. You know, and we could have a whole different form to enter details about a stock trade. And then it could have its own open button and its own close button. All these things could be analogs that fit here for a modal controller. Now, one of the things that I kind of dislike about using this hot wired framework and turbo and stimulus is that I feel like if you had a really big application, this could get really messy, mainly because you're just working with plain old JavaScript and HTML. And kind of like back in the days where there was Ajax and jQuery, things could get kind of messy and out of hand. I think this is really a step up from just using like plain JavaScript with jQuery. Uh, there's a lot more structure to this, but still it's not quite the level of structure that you'd see in a major front end framework like React or Vue. In a lot of ways, this front end framework is kind of like Ruby itself in that in some of the previous videos I've done, I've complained about how Ruby is not a strongly typed language and that could be a strength for it because it allows you to get a lot done really quickly and you, you don't have to worry about making all the verbose declarations of types and boilerplate code. That's the advantage of Ruby. You could do a lot with just a few lines, but it's also Ruby's curse because you don't have that strong typing and when you have a really complex enterprise sized application, the complexity grows and it could be very difficult to keep track of things. You might have code that leads to a dead end or you might make a change that affects some other part of the system and not realize it. And because you don't have a compiler, because you don't have type checking, that could lead to some problems as you're maintaining a very large code base. So I think this works really good for a simple application like this or a prototype application, but you know, something that's really to a large scale, I really think that it would be helpful to have even more structure to this. However, given the scope of this particular application I'm working on, I think it's great because using a very heavy front end framework like React or Vue requires a lot of maintenance in itself and all that boilerplate code that you have to maintain becomes kind of a pain when you're dealing with a small application like this or if you have multiple small applications like this that you're working on. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to the edit button and as you can see, here is the actual section for a stonk note. Inside of the actual stonk note, I've got the stonk note actions, which is this bar of functions that I want to have where I could kind of log additional notes on um, on a previous call that I made on which way a stock is going. And if we click the edit button, we get the uh, edit stonk note form. So it works just like the new note button, except the link is going to the edit stonk note path. So that turbo frame loads into this modal right here the edit stonk note form and then just like we do with the new note button it goes to the follow edit link stonk note action on a stonk note actions controller and then look what it does it fires the open stonk note form event now let's talk about the destroy part of the crud operations so here i have the delete button 
and it brings up a little confirmation. Are you sure you wanna delete this? You hit cancel, it doesn't work. But if you hit okay, it'll remove the note. So here on the left side, I have the stonk note actions, the partial that builds this little toolbar right here. And uh, as you can see here for the delete button, which is the X, I'm using an emoji. And it goes to the delete stonk note path for that particular stonk note ID. So it works very similar to the way that we're doing the edit button, uh, except it goes to the delete path. And one important distinction to note here in Rails 7 is that we're doing data turbo method delete. Now, this is important because in previous versions of Rails, you would use method delete, but now you have to use data turbo method. And the reason is that Rails 7 no longer ships with the unobtrusive JavaScript library, and we're using turbo instead to do that delete navigation. So if you just do method delete, it's going to try hitting the get endpoint instead of the delete endpoint. Now, getting the confirmation to work was a little bit tricky. So here in the Stonk Notes controller, I have this event handler here, and it looks for the delete method coming through. And if it's not a delete request, uh, it'll ignore it. But if you're putting through a delete request, it'll intercept that and do the confirmation prompt. If the user doesn't click OK, then it'll do event.preventDefault, which prevents the request from going through. Now, an important detail about this was I had to go up to the Stonk Notes controller for this event handler. And here's the event that's being intercepted. So in the Stonk Notes section, and the data controller on this overall section for this whole big part here. Let me show you. Stock notes journal, this H1 corresponds to that right up there. And then here, this area, this data action corresponds to this right here. And this is where we're capturing the event, turbo before fetch requests, which goes to that event handler right here that does the confirmation. Now, the reason that I have it on the level above is because if we put it on Stomp Note Actions Controller, that code is gonna get hit a whole bunch of times. That's because for every one of these sections, every toolbar that's created, there's a separate instance of Stomp Note Actions Controller. Okay, and to just give you a little peek at what the controller on the back end looks like. Uh, here's a destroy action, and it just does a soft delete, and then it renders a turbo stream. Uh, this soft delete's a method that I created because I don't like to actually destroy and remove from the database any stock notes, I just wanna hide them, so I have a, a hide flag on my scope, uh, and that reloads the object, and then goes through the controller here, and in the destroy turbo stream, it just does a turbo stream dot remove for that particular DOM ID of the stonk note in question. Well, that's all I have for this episode. If you wanna see the source code a little bit more up close and play with it yourself, be sure to join my Patreon. And if you like the video, go ahead and like this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because it really helps improve my analytics with YouTube. And I'll see you in the next video.